what a treat we have for you. Dr. Michael Herco joins us from the Falls Road Animal Hospital to answer your pet questions. And with him, a 25-year-old tortoise who was rescued 18 years ago when he was only 5 pounds. He was much smaller back then. And Dr. Herco, how long do they live typically? They can live well over 100 years. So, I mean, what you're dealing with here is still, you know, pretty much a youngster, teenager, if you want to consider it as such. Um, and he's very happy. He's very good. You know, <laughs> hangs out outside. Do not go off the steps. He almost made a run for it <laughs> earlier, but now we have him eating, so he's happy. What's his name? Do, do we have a name? Yeah, his name is Darwin. Darwin. They're owned by clients of ours. Yeah. You know, it's sort of interesting when they come in. They get the whole trail of people with their cameras and iPhones taking pictures as they yeah, walk into really, the room. Really remarkable. That's quite a show. Well, we've got some questions for you while he uh, munches on, Back his, up. on his lunch. I have a two-year-old black lab rescue. He's terrified of thunder, but surprisingly wasn't scared of fireworks. How can I help him get over his fear? That's going to take a little bit of time. I mean, what you're looking at in those situations is you're going to have to desensitize them. Um, you know, if you've got a thunderstorm coming through, record it. You know, get the noise of it. You know, and you start with slow things. You know, put it on for a couple seconds. You know, make sure he's quiet and comfortable. Stop it. Reward him. And then you keep doing that for longer and longer time periods. Um, that's the basics. You know, okay. you can talk with a the behaviorist. There are medications they can sometimes give as well. Okay, sounds good. Here's the next one. My dog was diagnosed with bilious vomiting syndrome. His vet recommended I feed him late at night and early in the morning. It hasn't helped. Any advice? That one we need to see what, you're ta what they diagnosed and how they diagnosed it with. Okay. I mean, you're, with a bilious vomiting syndrome, usually it's an empty stomach, and that's mm -hmm. why they were recommending feeding at night, feeding in the morning. You know, if that's not working, there may be other issues going on there. Anything okay. from parasites to inflammatory bowel disease, et cetera. So it may need to have some additional diagnostics Further done. Further testing. Okay. Are pets impacted by carbon monoxide the same way humans are? What are the symptoms, if so? Yes, they can be affected by carbon monoxide. Um, what you're looking for is a dog that's acting uncomfortable, weak. You know, if you're looking at the gums, you may see it more of a bluish coloration, you know, those type of scenarios, you're going to want to have a, the house tested, the environment tested to see if that's the case initially. But most times you're bringing it into the hospital, getting you know, oxygen and, and therapy mm -hmm. and fluids and things like that to support them for the initial portion of it. So they can definitely be in danger. They can definitely be in danger if you've got concerns carbon about carbon monoxide. All right. Well, thanks so much for bringing Darwin. He's really cool. Yeah. And he's done a great job, hasn't he? He hasn't run off on us. I think he probably is I ready to go. I don't think he'd now. run very fast. <laughs> You're right. We would catch him. Thanks so much, Dr. No Herco. Nice having you.